Hello everyone, um, this is our third video in piping engineering and today we will be talking about the codes, standards and specifications. In this video we will talk about the differences between them and what are the most common codes and standards that we use for piping and piping engineering. First, what are the differences between the codes, standards and the specifications? The code is a set of rules and requirements, and these requirements are the minimum requirements for building this facility. And these requirements that have to be followed by everyone. It have to be followed. We have to follow these requirements by the engineer, by the operation, by the manufacturers, by anyone who is working on this project. And the code sometimes it is legal, and it is mandated by the authorities. To follow the code. The standard it's an additional requirements to the code. The code was the minimum requirements but the standard it has higher requirement than the code. The standard also will tell you how to apply the code requirements and the standard can be different from one company to another company but the code it is the same code and it has to be followed by all the companies. The specification, it gives you more details to the standard. And the specification is built to this specific project. And the specification can be different from one project to another project, even within the same company. So let's take an example to understand the differences between code standard and the specification. So one of the examples is the code will say or requires a block valve to be installed to isolate between two different systems. So the code requires a block valve. Now this valve can be a gate valve, ball valve, any different type of valve. So the standard or the company standard will say for this service and this fluid we prefer or the company wants to use a ball valve. So the code just required any block valve, but the standard said it will be a ball valve. And also the standard will say that to operate the valve you have to install it this way, and how to install the valve, how to operate the valve, how to... so you can use the valve easily with no problems. Now the specification will say because in this project we have a high temperature. We cannot use non-metallic seats with the ball valve. We have to use a metal seated ball valve. So the specification will add more details to the ball valve so you can explain and you can describe exactly the full description for the valve and you can go to purchase the valve. You know the material of the valve, the specification will list all the additional requirements and anything else that was missing from the standard or from the code. Now, what are the most common codes and standards that we use in piping? It's a big list of codes and standards, but we just list the most important ones. So we have ASME, which is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. We have ASTM, American Society for Testing and Materials, API, American Petroleum Institute, NACE, National Association of Corrosion Engineers, MSS, Manufacturers Standardization Society of the Valves and Fittings Industry, and finally NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. The first codes that we have is the ASME, which is American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And the SME is a very critical and very important code that we use uh, in piping and piping engineering. The SME is split it into two main subcommittees, and these are uh, the two main ones that we use in piping. Um, so SME B31 for the pressure piping, and SME B16 committee, and this is for the components, making the components a standard, like components, fittings, valves, gaskets, flanges, and everything. We can call the ASME B31 as a design code and the B16 as a, we can split it into two different groups, the pressure rating and the piping components. 
So the design code are under B31 committees and these are B31.1 for the power piping and B31.3 for the press process piping. So P31.1 mainly talks about the piping and the power generation and B31.3 is mainly for the process piping in the refineries and petrochemical plants. So what is a design code? So if we have a point A and we need to connect it with the piping all the way to point B, so we might have a lot of connection or a lot of components between point A to point B. So we might have a flange connected to a straight piece of pipe and then reducer, elbow, valves, another flange, another pipe, a lot of pieces are connected together to make the complete line pipe. So how to connect these components together and how to weld these components? What are the welding requirements? Is there any testing that we need to do for the welds after we complete the weldings? Um, is there any hydro test that we need to do the to the line after we complete? What is the wall thickness for the pipe? Like what is the T for the pipe? And how to calculate the wall thickness? And what is the testing conditions? What is the testing pressure? All of these requirements are coming from the design code. So the design go code is going to tell us how to make the design works. And this is a B mainly covered by B31.3. When we move to the next group, which, which is the ASME pressure rating codes. To understand what is a pressure rating or a pressure class, let's assume that we have 10 different lines in um, this facility. And each line of these 10 lines have its own design conditions. So we have the first line with 100 PSI, the second one is 200, the third one is the 300, and so on. When we start to do the calculations based on the design conditions, like the temperature and the pressure, we will have different wall thickness for the pipes. We will have different flange thickness. So now we need, if we have a flange thickness different than the other one, and the first flange, it might have different number of bolts if they are not standard. So how are we going to connect the valve that we might have purchased from one of the manufacturers in the east with the flange that we got it from a different manufacturer in the west? So these flanges has to be standard component. They have to meet together or they have to have the same dimensions, the same sizes, and everything is the same. So you can pull, bolt these flanges together. And they started to group these pressures together in groups. So they said from zero, let's say from zero to 200 PSI will be in the first group. And then from 201 to 400 PSI, that will call it as a second group. And then the third group will start from 401 all the way to 600 PSI. So we have now these groups. So any line with a condition that falls from zero to 200, any line, we will call it in this pressure class and we will use the same flange in this pressure class. So now they start to give these classes numbers. So they call it this, the first group, they call it class 150. And the second group, they call it class 300. So we have pressure ratings or pressure classes are defined in B16.5. And these pressure classes are class 150, 300, 400, 600, 900, 1500, and 2500. All the flanges with the same pressure class will have the same exact dimensions, no matter what is the material. So they will have the same number of bolts, the same bolt diameter, regardless of the materials. And this is a table for the pressure class. Now, the materials are different. The strength of the materials are different. So carbon steel is stronger than stainless steel. So if you have the same thickness between carbon steel and stainless steel, that means the stronger material with the same thickness can handle more pressure. So 
the, the maximum pressure is different based on the material and they called it material groups so we have a material group number one we have material group number two and material group number three material group number one is mainly for the carbon steel and low alloys material group number two is for stainless steel and material group number three is for the higher alloys like nickels so carbon steel also it has different grades so you have material group 1.1 1.2 1.3 and 1.1 has maximum pressure for the same class like class 150 will have a maximum pressure different than material group number 1.2 and material group 1.2 will have a different than 2.1 but all of these materials will have the same dimensions so you can bolt a carbon steel flange to another stainless steel flange so this is the pressure rating codes now we move to the third group of the SME which is under B16 and this is for the piping components so we have a long list of B16 codes like B16.9, B16.10, 11, 20, 21 so let's say B16.9 that's for the fittings, the butt weld fittings 16.11 this is for the small bore fittings like the socket weld and threaded B16.20 that's for the gaskets 16.21 for the gaskets, the non-metallic gaskets these piping components codes like B16.9, B16.11, B16.20 they are listing the dimensions and the tolerances and the standards that all the manufacturers and everybody has to follow to manufacture and make these components so when you order a component you just need to say that this component will be manufactured as per ASME B16.9 so they will know that this elbow like the one in the picture here will have this dimension and you're good to go the next one we have is the ASTM which is American Society for Testing and Materials the ASTM mainly talks about the materials and material requirements like the chemical composition what is the percentage of the carbon how much chromium we have how much nickel we have and also talks about the testing for these materials and talks about the like the hardness marking um, any heat treatment required for this material um, there is a lot of ASTM designation each material has a different ASTM number and like ASTM for carbon steel is going to be different from stainless steel so let's talk first about the piping components so we can see how we understand or how we group these ASTM numbers the piping components are mainly three main items the pipes the fittings and the valves pipes are made from seamless pipe or welded pipe and sometimes it's made from plate for the large bore pipes fittings are forged fittings for the small bore or rod fittings for the large bore and we also have plates like a spectacle blind valves are made from forgings for the small bore or from casting for the large bore so if you want to describe if you want to order a seamless pipe so the seamless pipe is going to have a different ASTM number from the welded pipe and sometimes the and the forged fittings will have a different ASTM from the rod fittings valves forging valves will be the same like the forging fittings um, casting valve will be different ASTM number and the ASTM number for carbon steel will be different based on the material from so forging carbon steel is different from forging stainless steel when we want to order a component like an elbow we need to specify two things or two component or two codes in the description we need to mention the material so if you are ordering if you make an order for an elbow so you need to say the size like this is a six inch elbow 90 degree and we need to say it will be a carbon steel made from ASTM A234 and you will need also to mention what is the design it will be designed as bare the ASME B16.9 the next code we have is the API 
American Petroleum Institute. And we mainly use this American Petroleum or API codes in the valves. So we have a separate code or separate API for each the valve type. So ball valve, gate valve, butterfly valves, globe valves, and check valves. Each one of those will have a separate API, like API 608 for the ball valves or 600 for the gate valves. The next one we have is the NACE, National Association of Corrosion Engineers. We only use NACE when we have a corrosive fluid running inside the pipe. So the NACE will have additional requirements to the material. So when we order a um, valve, we need to mention that this valve will be forging or forged valve as per ASTM A105. And this valve will need to meet the NACE requirements. So all the additional or extra requirements as per the NACE will, be, will have to be met in when they manufacture this valve. And the main two NAS that we use is MR0175 and NAS MR0103. Next one in the list is the MSS, Manufacturers Standardization Society of the Valves and Fittings Industry. The MSS is similar to the ASME, um, and we only use it when we need to order a fitting that is not covered by the ASME. So when we have like a fitting or a valve that's not covered in the ASME or we don't have um, designation in the ASME. So when we have a fitting, uh, like we normally order it as per ASME B16.9, but the ASME B16.9 has a size limit of 48 inch. So sometimes when we have a larger fitting, like 60 inch we can go to MSS SP43 also the branch fittings or branch connection like integrally reinforced branch connections this is not covered by the SME so we can use MSS SP97 so um, valves like we can use MSS SP80 for the bronze valves the last one we have is the NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. And this one is mainly used for fire water requirements. So that will list the underground materials or materials to be used above ground and design and testing requirements for the fire water system. With that, we came to the end. And in the next video, we will be talking about the piping components in details, how to describe these components, what are the different components type. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you very much.